Hello and welcome to a new episode of Inside of the Atomic Factory, the Unlap series where I'm showing and talking about assets for a new version of the Atomic Shift game. As always, thanks for your support. If you like this format, consider subscribing and ringing the bell, and if it works, it's much appreciated. I'd be glad to see your thoughts and ideas in the comment section. I know that quality of time lapse itself is a bit finicky because of zooming in and out too fast. I am proud to say that this problem is solved now, and this is the last footage recorded using old method. If you are interested in my approach to solving this problem, check out last video on this channel in which I describe the problem and solution to it in details. But let's get to the main part of this video. Asset about which we are going to talk today is absolute opposite to the last one video about which I have uploaded. It was an alien looking almost magical apparatus which creates reagents out of energy. And today we are going to talk about the machine which is based on the real life reference which I have reproduced quite close to the original. This was love from the first sight. I was looking for inspiration to draw a new machine, and most of the time it leads to finding some interesting shapes or parts, not whole machines, which was the case this time. I liked it so much that I immediately started drawing first shapes, absolutely ignoring the fact that it was a late night, and I've planned to go to sleep after scrolling through some references. First thing I did when I started working with this reference was a change of perspective, which, now that I'm thinking, wasn't necessary. Because set of machines in the original game had two placed near the side wall, which had almost the same perspective as this press, except that it was more of a drop-down view. Analytic perspective might be interesting because it doesn't have a problem which turns to a classic for this time lapse series. Two thin side wall problem, which doesn't allow to add any series detailing to side parts. But what's done is done. And now we can only discuss actual assets and not some kind of alternative realities where my thoughts came all the way around. So, first I've produced all the main shapes of the machine from the picture and then moved it to different type of legs, because it seems a bit more fitting this way. Such legs are designed to lower impact of vibrations of the machine, which is, you know, kinda important when there are a lot of highly precise machines around. I've also moved circuit box to a higher position, adding a bit of depth this way. It was a pain to find the right shapes for it, but in the end I think it was the effort. The final and the most important element for me was an onboard engine. I'm always looking for diversity when I'm working on the detailing of the assets for this game. There were pipes, wires, different kinds of controls, and some type of engine or other mean of converting energy to pressure was on my list for a long time. After I was finally happy with the overall look, to make this thing less of a plain metal box and to be closer to the original, I've added wires, which originally were planned to be hidden under some sort of plate, of a color different to the color of machine. But I've changed my mind very fast, because 2 pixels isn't enough to make such a plate look good. I've also changed the idea of a circuit box and made it into a high tech control system with screen and buttons, similar to those in other machines. All in all, working on coloring this piece was quite interesting and very easy. Except, not really. Everything was easy, and then... engine happened. I struggled a lot with it, looking for some ideas of coloring it so that it doesn't look like a strange blob of color. But even after I found my solution to it, I wasn't done with this piece. After thinking about the gameplay elements once more, I realized that Claw Manipulator won't be able to put a reagent under the press. That meant that there should be some kind of moving part for inputting and outputting things from this machine. I've had too much of plates moving forward out of the machine at this point, so I decided that I'm done with this idea. Also, moving plates inside of the press doesn't look like a good idea, because pressure would break moving parts sooner or later. With all of this in mind, I decided to add a conveyor belt to this machine. It removes all the moving parts inside of the work zone of the press, gives close manipulator free access, and it's unique to this machine, which is always a great thing. This conveyor belt in fact has only 3 pixels in height, but even with this limitation it turned out great and looks 100% solid when you are looking at a picture and not the specific pixels. This is important to keep in mind for every pixel artist and animator. Don't focus on perfection of specific pixels or frames out of context of a full piece. If result in piece works, Imperfection in specific pixels and frames doesn't matter, and sometimes these imperfections might even make your piece better. And that's it for today about my thoughts of this asset. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Stay safe, have a good day, and bye.